Hello there, this is Hans Forsner with Napkin Engineering. Thank you for your interest in Insole. Insole is a sound insulation prediction software. I'm In this video, I'm presenting um, version 9, revision 22. And I'm discussing the functionality and options of the Insole material editor. Insole installs several Insole databases. And these databases include construction materials, studs, cores, profiles, glazing materials, floor covering, and absorption materials. Here are kind of some of the um, areas where we need the, uh, the selections of these materials. It could be, for example, on the panel one, panel two, or panel three for a triple uh, construction. For each panel, we have up to six layers or six types of materials that we can sandwich or put together. So here, layer one. So here you can select between different materials. You can uh, search by different names of materials, like gypsum or, or concrete. And then it shows up in the list of materials, uh, any, in this case, element name that starts with concrete or has concrete in the name. Um, let me reset that. Then uh, you can also select by categories. So that would, for example, if we select masonry, we'll show you all the masonry materials right here. Or you can select it by manufacturer and then it would show just the elements that are provided by a specific manufacturer. On the frames, we have the absorption materials also in the, dat in the database. And again, here we have categories of fiberglass, mineral wool, others. I think there's polyester and uh, echo, I think. And then here again, we have manufacturers. So those are kind of some of the areas where we have these, um, yeah, kind of references to databases. Uh, under the stud um, frame types, we also have different uh, dimensional selections. So that would be in the database for studs. We can uh, define the uh, names and also a dimensional uh, definition of different stud types. And that's also part of the database that you can predefine these uh, dimensions. So let's get started and uh, take a look at the material database. So we go to project material editor. So that's up in here. And the software will first uh, load all the materials. And then here we can see at the very top, uh, we have at the very top, we have uh, the different selections for materials, the profiles. So that's uh, steel profiles, glazing materials, floor covering, absorption, core, and stud dimensions. Um, below that, we see custom and insole. So here we can uh, flip back and forth between the insole database uh, information that is available. And again, this is installed uh, at the installation of the software and custom materials. So that is a list of materials that I created or were created by copying things from insole or created from scratch by adding a new material. So here we have add item. So you can start with any new material and uh, define all the parameters for that. So one of the parameters is of course the name. Then uh, you can select from a category and which category you want to assign that material. And so here is gypsum. Then what type of materials do you have? Is it isotropic? Isotropic means it's a uh, consistently out of one material where we can just define that with mass, stiffness, the thickness and a loss factor. If it's orthotropic, um, just like wood, then uh, you may have a situation where the properties are not necessarily the same in all directions. So you may have additional parameters to show the variation that you have in different directions. Um, All right, so let's uh, take a look at the uh, uh, the insole database right here and uh, discuss the filtering that we have here in the material editor. 
So uh, first of all, there is a icon the, with the two dots here. We can select and select by categories, by type or manufacturers, just similar to the uh, generic uh, GUI from Insole. But in this case, this is just defining the material selection within the database. So if we select by glazing, that would select all the glazing materials, right? If we select by, uh, for example, gypsum, and then also turn on, for example, search all region, then it shows all materials in any region. And so let's click OK. And then here in this case, yeah, there's a few uh, materials um, that are in different regions. So anything that is red, that would be assigned to a different region that is currently not active. So in the settings is uh, where the user can define which materials from which regions uh, he wants to see. So we can reset that by this little double arrow here. And it they again shows all the materials. Um, so let's take a look at the profile. So here we have different profiles. And these profiles can be a combination for different materials, uh, like a steel flooring. So where we have uh, steel with some sort of uh, like concrete on top of it, there we would uh, define a profile and then whatever filling it, it has on top of it. And um, we have uh, maybe the next thing on the glazing, um, different laminated glass. So here the laminated glass uh, is defined as a um, yeah elastic, elastic core material with a side A and side B and a core uh, elastic core material in between. And um, so again here we can define these uh, different properties and then of course uh, benchmark it later with measurement data. Um, in, if you have different core uh, materials that you want to add into the database, so here we have the core materials. So here are some of the um, Safelex AC41 or some of those um, DuPont uh, glass materials or core materials that are already in the software here. Then we have uh, absorption, absorption materials. Uh, here we have um, different categories, fiber, mineral, wool, and so on. And then in, in terms of the properties, thickness, density, and the flow resistivity. All right. Uh, under the studs, again, here we just have these dimensional definitions. And again, you can copy any of those into the uh, custom library by clicking on the copy to custom list. It copies it over puts the name with a copy in it. So with that, it's an indication that this is a copied element. If you want to change the name, you can uh, modify that and say modified or whatever um, you would like to change the name. And again, here we can change any of these parameters with that. All right. And then down here, you can change the region settings. So the region settings basically allows you to assign it to different uh, countries. And uh, with that, right here, we can uh, say this material is available in these regions. We can delete uh, material in the custom library by clicking on the delete item right here. And uh, we can export import materials and we can print materials into, uh, you know, send it to the printer for a listing of all the material properties. So that closes or finishes the uh, discussion on the materials database. Thank you for listening. And um, yeah, I certainly recommend to play around with the material database just to get um, a, a good overview of the materials and then also how to copy and uh, modify materials. Uh, there's a lot of cases where you need to customize it to also see 
what may be uh, some of the variations that you see to measurements that could be explained to um, yeah, kind of the variability of, of the materials.